Hey, what's up, guys? It's Oakley, and we're we doing an awesome battle. This is the Empire Empire of Nicaea. That's gonna be my faction here, and we're gonna be playing against the Kiev and Rus. A fitting setting for this. It's gonna be the nighttime, and it's gonna be middle of winter, middle of the just uh, flatlands here. Um, really cool stuff. Um, the models looking awesome and the glistening uh, lights of our torches. Uh, so I did bring some catapults. So let's go over my uh, army composition real quick. So up through the front I have three of these. Oh, actually they're different. I have two medium crossbowmen and then one archer unit, heavy bow unit on the right. And then I have um, these uh, scutatoi, which is going to be basically normal spears. You can see going in center and then flanking on either side. And then I have uh, contratoi, medium pike in the center. And then I have clusters of heavy infantry down through the center, some axemen as well. These are going to be the Varangian guard. We'll take a look at the units up close soon. Cavalry going in the flanks. Indy Pride is also moving up with some Rus heavy spear militia in the front. Thin lines of Rus guard axemen. Four archers up through the front. Five infantry and a lot of calves lurking around in the back. And I also have one artillery piece. But anyways, let's go ahead and start taking a look at this. Um, because obviously, all the models look super awesome in this game. Let's make sure we get some nice shots of this. Here's one of my units. We'll go ahead and take a look. Some of the crossbowmen now moving up. At this point of my deployment, I actually couldn't see Indie Pride. Um, so I was moving up kind of blind towards this little uh, scrubland in the woods, so being a bit cautious in my approach. Long, thin lines here. Pikemen moving back right here in support. So I can fall back to this. So obviously having pikes in the middle is going to be a great way to hold your center firm. Uh, cavalry on either side. Actually, we haven't gone ahead and looked at my cavalry. These are cataphractoi. Or actually, these ones are. Super, super awesome cav. Heavily armored, great stats on them, and I put uh, extra experience chevrons, silvered these guys up so they're going to be brutal. Uh, Cataphractoi, and then we have some uh, Pornoiroi. Not sure how to pronounce that. Um, but yeah, these guys also looking really awesome. Let's get some nice shots of this. So yeah, position myself, kind of having a face off against the enemy cav. We can take a look at some of the heavy cav here. Now looking at us. God, the models are so cool. Uh, his main line now positioned in the woods. Got a good position. Some of his militia is going to be moving forward to kind of probe my forces. Yeah, you can see here with this little ridge, you can't really see much of what's going on. So the Russians also moving out in the dead of winter, not necessarily knowing what's going on. He's got these awesome uh, dismounted Druzina. These guys are pretty good. Uh, tier 2, they have access to them so they can chop through armor. Now my guy is moving forward. I wanted to show you in particularly the, ah, uh, yes, the Varangian Guard unit that I'm holding in the back as my elite uh, units because they can chop through this and man do they look freaking beautiful. Beautiful. These guys were uh, notorious in history serving as bodyguards, elite infantry, um, very, very good troops. Um, they are going to function kind of like uh, the Hetiara Guard that we saw in traditional Attila. Um, basically two-handed axemen guys that can chop through the enemy very high attack, uh, but at the same time low um, Missile block chance as a result, but these guys, you know keep them out of the fray and wait till the engagement comes and they will do work So that's what I'm doing. I'm also gonna be moving up with one catapult unit like I mentioned mostly because um, I Wanted some way to dislodge Indy pride from whatever defensive position he took That's why I put brought this artillery piece up and he's gonna help me push the flank so right now we're being rather cautious and you saw right there what looked like a, a comet falling to the ground that was actually me in the battle popping insert and I got a shot off which was interesting it allowed me to shoot while I was still pushing my guys off so I was trying to get some sneaky shots against Indy Pride now I'm gonna get some not so sneaky shots just mostly to try and target his cab let's watch a little bit of this artillery is gonna reposition my crossbow are gonna be moving up and there you can see. Starting to target his cab. He's going to pull out out of there, which is perfect. That's exactly what I needed. So you can see I'm pushing this flank, moving up with some of my uh, medium uh, spears. They're going to be having, uh, you know, screening my cavalry. So I'm going to be moving on both wings. 
up to the center. I'm going to make a big aggressive push for the center. I want to push back his bows. He has a bit of a superiority on me with these guys. Uh, so I definitely need to bring up my crossbowmen, which is what I'm doing. And I'm going to be supporting that with massive lines. My guys are on shield walls, so they're going to be able to take those hits pretty easily. His bones, bows are, are lined up. And let's see if we can't... Uh, Get some shots of my guys moving up here in shield wall. Already setting some of the trees alight with my crossbow and now getting some shots off. Some of my guys going down, um, but that's going to be the exception. So here you go. Front line is going to be pushing the enemy back. Giving cover to my crossbow and look at all the, uh, the volleys that my front lines are absorbing. Artillery also bombarding this position, so pressure is on right here. Indy's going to try and look to exploit this little gap, which is why I'm bringing in some of my uh, medium pikes. I'm pulling back on either side to try and reform. Uh, going to have to bring in more reinforcements um, because my infantry is reacting rather slowly. So here he goes, coming after my crosswind. Here comes some pikes, however. So I'm able to catch him. Um, he only got a couple of my crosswind, so I'm going to try and... Uh, close in on this cavalry. It's going to try and scoot on out of there. I have more reinforcements cutting across. That means his bows can pepper my lines. You can see he's starting to target my cavs. So good move on Indy's part. Uh, he only lost two men for that exchange. He disrupted my whole line, caught a bunch of my crossbows. So a good move overall. However, it caused a distraction. So I'm going to move some cataphractoid behind, behind his lines, hoping he didn't notice. My own artillery is going to continue to get some shots off on his high priority uh, cavalry. And my front lines are going to continue to absorb some of the shots. A couple of his shots were starting to hit my cataphract, so I'm going to pull them out of here. Can't be sticking on the, the front lines for too long. But here comes my guys. So I'm slowly encroaching, like I've been saying, closer and closer with my spear wall, crosswind coming back to start picking apart at his front lines because I want to get rid of his own spearmen so that will allow me to charge through the center. You can see Indy has mostly swords, that means if I can break these two uh, spear militia, that means I can come in with cav and basically steamroll everything, get some nice strikes going on. So I'm pretty happy with this. So what he's going to have to do is react to this somehow, which he's doing with his bows. I think he's getting a pretty good exchange, um, which is why he's forcing me to move up. Just going to continue to get you some nice cinematic shots. Uh, let's see if we can't... Get some cinematic shots from the crossbowman's perspective. So already starting to be bloodied. This is freaking awesome. But like we've showed you before, the uh, the skirmishers don't actually do that much damage to each other. It takes a long time to whittle them. These guys uh, with focus fire are going to be going down. Um, so here we go, pushing forward. He's going to react to this. He's like, okay, Oakley is too close. So he's going to be pulling in some of his Rus guard axemen and heavy cav. Um, swords will definitely beat these spears, especially if he brings in some of his own heavy axemen. So that is how he wants to counter this. So I'm continuing to probe him, and what I want to do is bait his swords into a position where I can hit them with my own cav. So I'm keeping some of my cav up close. I actually brought in some of my units in the back. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on slow motion so I can explain my thoughts. So I brought the cavalry unit in the back just to fix his cavalry on this wing. I'm now going to bait his cavalry all on this flank and then move my uh, spears to block this flank. What I'm trying to do is draw out his support in the center uh, because I noticed that now he has, look at this, no spears to guard his center. That means I can move in with some of my cav, which is exactly what I'm doing with these cataphracts, and start knocking about his infantry. If I can get that advantage, yep, there you go. You can see I'm going after this infantry. And look, my spears have effectively kept all his cav out of the fight. This means I can knock his infantry. If I get some nice initial blows with the infantry, that'll give me the advantage. And then I can pile in with some of my elite guys who are holding in reserve um, for some of my swordsmen. So yeah, that's my strategy so far. Let's see how it ends up. Indy's going to be landing a bunch of these hammer and anvils on my uh, cataphractoid over on this side. Which is going to be good. But we've already seen in previous battles that cavalry engagements last a long time. So I'm not super worried about that. And there, I landed a nice strike with my uh, cataphract. They just mowed down his dismounted units, and then I came back in while they were on the ground and hit him really hard with some of my own swordsmen. So that's going to allow me to get the edge. I'm pushing through the center with some pikes, so he can't charge through there. So I'm getting a nice advantage. I'm going to be pouring in with my uh, my guard unit here. I'm going to try and overwhelm his guys, who are already losing pretty heavily in numbers. Meanwhile, Indy's guys are going to be circling in the distance, and I'm going to be closing in on them with my... Uh, spears look at all his cavalry not able to do anything I'm gonna be slowly positioning my spears to get in on this fight and relieve my cataphracti which I've only lost one unit 
Cavalry going to be coming here to support. Me and all on the left, Indy is going to be pulling back. My crossbowmen are continuing to put on the fire, so doing a good job. Uh, catapults are out of ammo, so that's kind of decided at that point. Here we go, let's watch a little bit of this engagement. Indy is going to be pulling out, trying to get my cavalry equally distracted, so one of them is going to turn about, and then the other one's going to try and charge this unit, so not super decisive, but at least I charged both of them, so we're doing a one-on-one, -on -one and I should win this engagement. Um, I pulled him out, isolated him from the main group of units, so Cataphractoi with three veterancy should destroy uh, this Druzina. Over here, my guys didn't take any losses in the charge, Indies did, and my guys are probably going to have an advantage. I have my... Oh, going to put this on pause. Uh, I got my um, heavy bow supporting that, so I should win this. Over in the center, I'm just um, pulling back from any assaults. Going to win this. Pike's holding firm in the center, and this is exactly the opportunity I'm looking for. Look at these uh, Roost Guard Axemen going to be just destroyed by my general. So a free charge, and these are always the engagements you're looking to get. So right there, I pick up really tremendous amount of kills on an expensive unit. The enemy cav is going to position itself for a counter charge. However, before I can even get into this fight, I'm going to pull out of this engagement. So I'm in and out, having killed, um, you know, 30 of his men. So that's, uh, yeah, a f good hefty portion. So with those guys going down, this unit is threatening to be uh, to be destroyed. So that's to my advantage. I'm going to shuffle in some units to reinforce some spathoy guard. Meanwhile, all his archer fire is actually focused in on some of my uh, Roost Spear Militia, which is fine. They've done their, their duty in holding his guys back. I landed a nice cataphractoid charge against his Roost Guard Axeman again. This one, this time dropping all the way down to 60, so killing it to half strength. His cav is going to be mostly focused on killing my own cav, which we've seen previously. Just isn't effective in this mod. That's kind of a bug. He should be killing my guys. So now his cav has lost its charge, and I have friendly spearmen nearby to swarm his guys. Now Indy's going to be committing a lot of his uh, infantry to this fight, so I've got him tied up. The question is, who has the cav left for maneuvering? Well, at this point, both of our cav is locked down. So it's really who can free up their cav or win certain engagements and start getting the hammer and anvils. I still have my Emperor's bodyguard here, so that might be the tipping point. As well as the fact that I've broken through here with my units, and so I can now start putting pressure on his archers. Indy's one spare cav here is still running free. He's been doing a lot of damage to my units here, which uh, is allowing me to keep it away from the battle. Meanwhile, the engagements here, let's take a look at, uh, I've lost 5 men, he's lost uh, 16, so i am got the advantage here. I've actually lost a fair amount of units here. Um, his guy's holding up rather well, so pretty surprised to see that. Um, this engagement here, I've got my spears nearby, but they're exhausted, so this could go either way. Up through the center, it looks like I've committed my... Um, Varangian Guard, so let's watch these guys. Uh, like I said, if they don't get charged by Cav and they don't get shot by archers, they're going to do ridiculously well, so let's watch a little bit of that. Just going to be hacking away at his guys. So my Varangian Guard so far, 23 kills. They're going to be chewing through these uh, enemy forces. A nice cluster here that I'm breaking. My crossbowmen have reformed. I pulled them up here just to get some flanking shots on this group, make it melt that much quicker. He did break through my lines here. That's fine. I have some um, crossbowmen to shoot at that. And like I said, my general... Oh, Cataphractal actually got free. Plus the general. So now I can push through the center. Indy's forces are in the retreat. I'm sending some more guys to uh, attack the right side. I'm committing everything to tie that down. Meanwhile, I'm going to get some nice hammer and anvils. Especially right here with my general's unit. Straight into the back that was already committed against the um, <clears throat> Varangian Guard that had already taken some volleys from Crossbowmen. Crossbowmen are now finding new targets. And yeah, we're going to destroy this cluster of Russians. <coughs> or perhaps not Russian, uh, Kievan Rus. So that engagement is going super well. Pikeman's still alive. Um, over here, Indy has mostly chewed through my own men. Um, so even though I got a nice cavalry strike here, he has a lot of quality infantry that uh, beat out most of my uh, spears, so uh, that's fine. I'm just going to delay him and I'm going to rely on my surviving crossbowmen to deal a bit of damage. Meanwhile, Indy could be doing the same, but I have a couple guys free in his ranks. Spathoi Guard uh, going to be chasing Indy's guys down, so I'm really distracting his bows. Oh, actually, it looks like they're still getting some shots off, but not the most effective angles. And here we go. 
a free cataphractoid unit again. Proving its worth. Really epic stuff. And now, yeah, his main lines are melting. The Tiara Guard, or Varangian Guard, sorry, with 52 kills to their name. 23 kills here. Crossbowmen with 32. Doing pretty good. The archers have been repositioned to try and win back this engagement. However, he killed my cav, but with the reinforcements I send in my swordsman, I'm going to be able to win this fight. His general recommitted just to get, you know, try and knock out my units here, but these cavalry engagements really do take too long. Uh, Indy should have had an advantage here to destroy my guys, uh, which would have allowed him to free up some cav and kill uh, my units with a lot of hammer and anvils. However, due to the nature of this mod, that wasn't the case, so I got lucky in that respect. So there, now I'm going to get the advantage. I'm going to be retargeting my heavy bow infantry against his heavy bows, and they're not going to be able to do the damage they need to clean this up. His own units now here are engaged, and the Varangian Guard going to continue to chew through the main lines. There is one last remaining unit of infantry that's going at it against my spears. This would probably take a long time, but I've repositioned a couple of my little bands of units around the flanks. And now they're going to be charging into the rear. And actually I've decided not to commit too much to this. He might actually beat me on this front, but now I've freed up some reinforcements on this side so let's go ahead and get some cinematic camera on like have chasing down the remaining guys here and he's gonna look to disengage these cataphractoid definitely paying for themselves but taking a pretty heavy beating uh, from the bows over there so here we go all my guys now finally gonna be able to turn their attention to whatever's been firing up them from the forest there so look at the the rank upon rank of bodies here this is crazy so we should be able to charge for it I think we're following um, some of the few units who aren't actually moving. Let's watch some of my cav as they move up. There we go. It looks like we've uncovered what's at the top of the hill and it actually wasn't too much left. Just a couple bows uh, remaining here. Most of them uh, being sent in flight. There's a couple enemy spearmen uh, still in the mix here, but I should be able to kill them. Uh, pretty decisively, especially with my reinforcements coming to claim the hill. So this is a confusing battlefield with lots of bodies. Definitely, um, you can see where the main action took place. Really awesome stuff. And over here, this battle still not going down. Indy's actually starting to use Flaming Shot, which is having some pretty severe uh, morale impacts on my guys. Um, the enemy general is the... Yeah, this guard unit is still alive, so he has that advantage. The flaming shot definitely taking its toll, so he could start turning the tide against me here. He can take out my guys, then hit my archers. But here comes my own, finally the Emperor's bodyguard. Gonna be showing his presence. And he's gonna put a quick end to this. He still has a lot of HP. So there you go, running down these remaining guys. Coming to save the day at the last moment. So this is the, the, uh, you know, the ace in the hole here. Playing my final card. And we're just going to bowl over the remaining heavy infantry. And I think we may get a uh, a general on general fight here. Not sure actually. I can't remember how the battle went if you decide to engage with my guys. I am focusing fire with a lot of my um, units there. And it looks like he's going to take um, some of the bait over here and perhaps go for my infantry. Hoping to get a nice charge. Flaming shot is going to be on these guys. I get a counter charge with my own cavalry. So now he's stuck in the mix. My units in the distance going to be reloading. Ooh, firing on him from all sides. This is going to be just brutal against Indy's units. Here comes the flaming shot. There you go. Pyrrhic victory. So definitely took some hefty losses in killing out this Kiev and Rus force um, in the dead of winter. But very, very fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed. These battles are really awesome. Very tense. Long lasting. Thanks, Cindy Pride, for having this battle with me. I hope you guys can check out his channel. He has some great stuff. And yeah, stay tuned for more content. Loving this mod. And let's go ahead and take a look at um, what else we see here. Yeah, some of the stats at the end. So myself deploying about, you know, 140 men, 150 men more than Indy. 
Overall, my guy's doing okay. One of the Cataphractoi, 223, doing incredible. Emperor's Bodyguard mostly getting his kills at the end. I'm surprised one Cataphracto only got one kill. That's uh, pretty amazing. Um, I think it was mostly my, yeah, my, my swordsman here. Some of the more higher tier and my Varangian Guard doing work. So again, heavy infantry and heavy cav. This is something reminiscent of, you know, what you'd see, I guess, from the Romans there. And even some of my own um, crossbowmen and archers getting a fair amount of kills. Catapults not so much, but 11 kills against cav is actually pretty useful. And his own units here. Um, he had a lot of these dismounted Druzina, which were okay. Um, they seem to do basically as well as my Skutatoi um, Swordsman. The Dvor, wow, his archers actually did a lot of damage there, so didn't expect that. I think mostly his Rus Guard Axemen just took bad engagements. I targeted them, ran them over with my Cav. So had these guys had better engagements, had Indy's Cav, um, you know, had a better chance of taking out my Cav on the wings, this could have gone totally differently. Well fought nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.